What's going on, everybody? We're going to be covering the accelerated Panov attack now. We just covered the Panov attack, which was a really lengthy video. This one won't be so bad. It's only two uh, main lines I want to cover with a couple stray side lines. The regular Panov is E4, C6, D4, D5, E takes D, C takes D, and then the actual Panov move, C4. We, in the accelerated Panov, the C4 push comes on move 2. And I can't think of a single line in the Carol Khan where you do not move C6 and D5 right away. Not a single one. So you push your D5 pawn. White will trade off everything. E takes D. You recapture C takes D. And then recapture C takes D. It would be a mistake to capture the D pawn right away. White would be able to gain tempo with knight C3, kicking your queen. So you want to develop your knight to F6. Now you're attacking the pawn twice. They don't have any defenders, so no matter what they bring in, you can capture the pawn safely now without losing tempo. Normally they will bring their knight in. That's the second line we will cover. But the first line I want to cover first is a very aggressive line. Queen to a4 check. There is nothing wrong with developing your bishop to block, gaining tempo on the queen. There is a line where you trap the queen with bringing the bishop out which I will show you real fast, but the line we are covering is the knight blocking. Where you trap the queen, uh, safe move where it's defending its pawn and attacking your b7 pawn, the weakness, moves the queen to b3. And they might think you're crazy. You push the e pawn to e6. You know, they can recapture or capture your e-pawn, and it's safe just to recapture with your bishop. But then this is not the line that the queen gets trapped. If they get greedy, take your b7-pawn with the queen, you totally ignore it, and let them capture your rook that they're threatening. You just go ahead and recapture the pawn on d5, and let them snake in, and take your rook on a8. And even though they just captured a rook, if you look at the computer analysis, it is an even game. And the reason is because you have this stellar move, bishop to c5. We're more or less going to take all the squares around the queen away and then come in for the kill. And... If it wants to try to get out, its only way is queen b7. And it has that vertical line above to try to get out. We plug that up with b6 with the bishop. And there is one move that white is not going to find to try to save face. And I said try because you, you already won the queen. It, it's over. If they push the A pawn to A4, what you can do is castle. And we're going to bring that rook into the attack. We are threatening to bring our bishop, that's on D7, to C6, attacking the queen to take it off the board. So the only move that white has to prevent that move is bishop to b5 and if that's the case you throw in a check if it blocks with the knight you recapture the knight and it can't really recapture with the queen because if you do you're gonna check the queen with or you're gonna check the king with your queen 
and it only has four moves to get out. It's got all the lights, all the white squares. And no matter what white square it goes to, this one, this one, this one, or this one, you're going to check it with the white bishop, and you're going to win the queen. If it happens to go on the f1 square, you get the bishop and the queen. You will lose your bishop, obviously. Uh, well, that would be checkmate. Uh, it would, you know... How would, I, how would I hand? Oh, it would capture with the pawn. Duh. That's how it avoids checkmate. It just shows you that I don't have this written down. I, I'm doing this all on the fly. I've said it repeatedly. I don't have anything written down. It's all memorized from going over these lines repeatedly. Anywho, so their best bet is just to block with the bishop. And then once they do, you bring your bishop to c6 and the queen is lost. It can choose whatever piece it wants to take out with it, whether it be a bishop or a knight. And you recapture, and then the total uh, evaluation is you have a queen for a rook, a minor piece, and a pawn. But the position is scored so highly in your favor because you are 100% developed. Every piece has found a new square. You are castled in white. Looks like a three-year-old moved three times. So that is the line where the queen gets trapped. So naturally, you want to block with the um, you want to block with the knight. Once uh, you're blocked with the knight. Their best move is a developing move to c3. Anytime in the Carol Khan, uh, that door's driving me nuts. Let me close it real quick. It's windy as shit outside. Ooh, here we go. Once, uh, anytime there's the c pawn for white is gone in the Carol Khan as black, it's a good idea to fianchetto your king's bishop so we're gonna go ahead and develop the g pawn to g6 white will come in and add a defender to its d pawn with bishop c uh c4 and since the bishop and queen are next to each other with one space we can fork that with a pawn to set up the fork we have pawn to um, a six. Sorry, mosquito just buzzed in my ear and it sprayed some off. I'm outside. Uh, we got the pawn a six move, threatening b five. Now it can move. It's got a free move, and moving the pawn to d three opens up its other bishop because we can't fork it right away. If they capture, we can't recapture because that would leave our rook hanging. So we have to first set up moving our rook over. Once we move our rook over, it'll dodge the fork by moving its bishop to b3. There's no safe square for the queen. Uh, that's not going to regard in, or I'm sorry, result in having to lose tempo and move it again. Except for queen to h4 once we push b5. And then from here, we can go ahead and harass the light squared bishop because now our horse is free. It's not pinned anymore. So we push it to d5. And it'll back up its bishop since it doesn't want to trade a bishop for a knight. No one ever does. To c2. From here... We pick up the pawn on the D column with knight F6 to D5. And it doesn't want to trade because then we would result in uh, better development and would lose one of its pieces, positions. So it has this move and try queen to D4. 
And we are threatening at this point to trap the queen again in this line. We will move the knight to b4, and white will capture it. There's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, trading off queens for them. I mean, it, it'll not totally throw away the game, but it is technically a move that they can try. But if they capture the uh, knight that you move to b4, you push the pawn to e5. And if they don't pay attention and realize what's going on and move like a knight to f3, you have this move. You check with the knight, and now their queen falls because your bishop x-rayed and is attacking it now. So what it'll do is move the king over so you no longer have that check. It's the only good move for it. And in that situation, you go ahead and move up your pawn to a5, and that queen is trapped. Every single square on the uh, fourth rank is covered. In order, it's uh, covered by the queen, bishop, pawn, knight, Pawn, 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 pawn. Some of them are double covered. It's only square. It could move to is here, but that just delays it one move. Just march up the pawn, and now it's covered. So it could give up a bishop to save the queen if it wants. And that's with the move uh, bishop g5. And you can capture the bishop. And then it would be able to... Uh, snag, you know, the A pawn to get out. But that is the story of a lovely lady and how she avoided being trapped. I'm just kidding. She's a psycho bitch. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab a glass of water before we uh, get going on the second uh, line. Because I got caught in mouth like a motherfucker. I'm going to pause this. I guess I'll just stop it and make a new one and sandwich the two together. So I'll see you on the second half. What's going on, ladies and gents? I am back. Got my lips all hydrated. So the second line in the accelerated Panov we are going to be covering, as we said, is move when they move the knight. Uh, to C3. In this case, uh, we discussed that you can't take with the queen, so we're going to take with the knight. They are not going to recapture, because you're going to recapture with a queen. Now it's centralized. It's very strong where it is, uh, knowing that there is no knight to kick it out. So it'll just develop another piece. It'll develop naturally its other knight, uh, standard knights before bishops. In the beginning of the game to f3 and you do the same once all four knights are on the board it'll try pinning your knight to the king with bishop to b5 just like the other uh line we're gonna attempt to fianchetto our bishop if we're allowed they will not let us yet because they have the double attack on the uh knight if you want to give up a pawn you can move the knight to b6 they come in you recapture they come in and then you block with a bishop you could take a look at that if you want but if you don't want to lose a pawn we need to think of a way to guard that knight again we can't do it with the bishop because the horse is unprotected then and yeah, we really don't have too many options other than bring up the the queen to do it. This is the safest square starting off. And white has the move that's going to harass your queen for a while. Knight to e4. The safest square is moving your queen to e6. And then it'll harass your queen again with knight to g5. 
You want to move your queen to a safe square where it's still covering your knight, d7. And now it's got the move, uh, knight to c5. And you want to tuck your knight to c7. The reason why you don't want to go back to d6 is because then it would allow them to bring their knight to e4. And that's very bad. And it's bad because then once you finally reach the safe square, it's got this move, queen to d4. You can't capture it with your knight. Your knight's pinned. And the only option you have to not totally screw up your structure is knight to f6. And now that it has that knight on e4, it's got double the attack, and it's just not good. So when you have the opportunity right away, move directly to c7, and it'll come in with the same move attacking your rook, and you can plug that hole up with the knight now to f6, and it's fine. Just like how it harassed your queen, it's going to harass that corner. The slight queen move to c4 now threatens queen c7. Uh, big check with checkmate to follow soon after. Like if you did something like that, it's going to come in. You got one move. You know, it's going to come in, fork you. You know, after you take with your bishop, it's going to fork you again. You're going to drop your queen. So you got to solve that problem. And the best way is by pushing your e-pawn to e6. Now it's going to move its queen again to c3, attacking your knight. It's like all these subtle queen moves make you... You know, dance like you're from France. Bishop g7 fixes that. Another slippery move. Uh, knight e4 doubles up the attack on your horse. And you can just push e5 in that scenario. I will mention you could also do the uh, knight h5 route and kick the queen. But then you got to worry about getting your knight back into the game from the rim. So, push the pawn. Pawns are meant to be pushed. From here, uh, it's going to put you in check twice. It's going to take out both your knights. It doesn't matter what order. If it takes this, you recapture, and then takes this, and you recapture with the pawn, not the queen. It's going to do it. Uh, so after it takes out your knights, it's going to come back and jeopardize your bishop with the... Knight e4 move. And if you look at the, the computer line, like, you really only have one good move on the previous ones. You move your bishop to g7, uh, moving forward. And now it's got the move queen to uh, a3, getting ready to jump in with the knight and checking you since it's got that dark diagonal covered your best bet is bishop e6 and now your rooks are connected what you know you got everything is looking crispy and it's even material and this computer analysis is even so this is how you survive the accelerated panov attack where they come in you know trying to pin your knights and kicking around your queen without losing any uh advantage it's got the option to come in and check you on d6 you want to stay on the light square so it can't check you again that's when uh you bring in your king threatening to capture it now you got your king and queen so it's got to move and you can move your bishop again uh eyeballing the knight and if the knight moves you could snag the g-pawn and it'll check you again on the c5 square. And that's when you stay on the light diagonal, so it can't check you again. And that's how you survive the uh, accelerated Panov attack. And we did that in, uh, we did that in pretty good time, both of them. 
All right, I'm going to string these together and throw it up on the tube. And we still got we still got some to cover. We got the two knights variation. We got the hillbilly. We got the apocalypse attack. We got all, all or Armageddon or apocalypse. One of the two. <laughs> I forget the name. We got all kinds of shit to cover. So we will catch you on the next. And I do appreciate you. Have a good one.